So we've talked a good bit about inscription. I kind of, this is a one part of the, the interview I've been really looking forward to, which is I've scoured the internet for people who have done covers or interpretations or even complete reinventions and trying to make a score for inscription. Um, I've got a few different ones here. So one I've got is a, a complete just a uh, guitar recreation of the Death Card Cabin track. Then we've got a, a remix of a mashup of one track along with a different game. And I want to get your thoughts on that. And then one completely fan made track for inscription, which I'm not sure if you've heard yet, but I kind of want to okay, get let's see. all your I'm thoughts. I'm a massive, uh, I'm a huge <laughs> egoist. So maybe I've heard some of these. I, I poke around occasionally on the internet and stuff and see <laughs> what people are doing, but, but let's see. I like the font. <laughs> That's nice. I don't think I have seen this one. Brilliant, even better. <laughs> oh, this is great. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the first thing even to be said is that covers... Well, I'll listen for a second. <laughs> Talk directly over it. That's super good. The covers in general are just the most, um, the highest form of flattery mm. at, at, a, at a big level, like more than money or support or messages or even like award nominations or, or journalism coverage, like covers are the kind of ultimate thing that makes a composer feel good. Like, mm. because it's some sort of, I don't know, recognition that someone else who's a musician that, that I think that's where it comes to is that relatingness has somehow has some connection to your music. Um, and that I'm always still in awe of it, that like people go to the lengths to, to care about it and, and make covers. And yeah, it's just the best feeling, you know, of all the types of support. What I always find so impressive from them is that you can have someone you know, you will have done obviously the inscription score and there'll be a load of different stuff you've done in the background with the audio. And then these people will come in with just a guitar and they'll have to manipulate the guitar in whatever way to try and make it sound as close to that as possible. I've, is it actually, is a genuine question regarding the score? Have you ever thought about releasing guitar tabs or even sheet music for the actual scores themselves? Yeah, um, this is like, this is really embarrassing and maybe I shouldn't admit this. I, I, whenever, when I see this like tab, I'm actually thinking the opposite. I'm like, oh, cool. I could probably go back and learn how to play that because, <laughs> because I kind of am like, uh, uh, just become sort of like a chimpanzee at the, at the recording stage where I just like stare at something, write the melody <laughs> immediately, record it. And then like, there, there's specifically in inscription, there's like later, I, this is the, actually this piece is the first thing I ever wrote in the game. Um, I wrote it like super early and I wrote it on solo guitar. I just like sat down. Um, I actually used, okay, it's finished. Also, this is incredible. Rybeck guitar, thank you so much. This is great. And I'm going to check out the tab too. Um, but yeah, this is the first thing I ever wrote for the game. And I used this like tuning that's supposedly some tuning from the. Uh, traditional like Canadian something or other because I guess I don't know what the official lore is at the time it was like inscription was set in in rural Canada technically in that in that cabin mm -hmm. I don't know if that's if that's still the case um but and I just like sat down and kind of like jammed for a really long time and changed and that's why that first track is so long actually is because like I was sitting down and working with it for a really long time and then I took a big snippet of that but then at the end of the game, as one of the very last things, this uh, uh, Daniel was like, okay, so I want that guitar melody to come back and be very somber as like this, there's like this goodbye scene and, and it's like this really sad version or, or a heartfelt version of it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had like had to retranscribe that um, for something else on the keyboard and it was fine. But it's actually way easier to retranscribe something on keyboard than it is on guitar. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what tuning it was. I didn't know what was <laughs> going on. And I'm like going back and trying to pick apart. I'm like, how do I play this? Luckily, it was a really stripped down version, kind of like um, this guitar cover, which is just the melody. Mm -hmm. uh, because some of the in-between parts are when the weird tuning comes in. And I don't even, I could probably go back and scour the recordings to find what the tuning is. But I didn't really know what it was. And that one is, is quite simple. I think it's just like drop D. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, when you when you just do the melody. So thankfully, I could figure out how to play like just the melody notes. But in terms of releasing um, sh- scores and sheet music, yeah, it's kind of funny. I, I've gotten some requests, uh, but it's weird because I don't use scores at all uh, in my writing process. So it's kind of like when when people I think people imagine it as like oh like Jonah's going to publish you know the folder he has on his computer <laughs> full of all the inscription scores and what it actually is is like going back and wading through things and recreating it so there's a whole profession called engraving which is mm-hmm. just not even writing the music not even taking the music and putting it on sheet music but like how do you uh, uh, do all the symbols and which symbols should this be and how should this look and what's the page layout. So it's like, you have to get it all into sheet music. You have to make sure that it's playable and legible. And then you have to stylistically make sure that it's all on the page and all this. It, it's an entire art form in itself. Um, maybe eventually I'll do it. I, I think for the time being, some people, if people are really into it, they can look, there's like some piano tutorials of some stuff out there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I, I probably not on the horizon. I don't know. Maybe if someone gave me a really good reason to do it, um, I could. But we'll see. I don't know. So the next one I have up here, it's not more so of a cover as it is a mashup. I don't know. Have you played Hunt Showdown? Uh, I have not. No. So there's a, a, a track in that uh, Rise of Dead Man, which is actually kind of more Western inspired, but it actually goes very well with the Trapper and the Trader. Uh, which someone has mashed up to put into one score altogether. So okay, um, cool. This sounds familiar. Maybe I've seen it, but it wouldn't. It would have been a while ago. Well, it's got fifty-five thousand okay. oh, views, so it's one of the more popular mashups, I believe, at least that I could find. <laughs> oh wow! This is awesome. Ah, okay, so it's also the, like, humming vibe. This is so cool. I mean, this track is, like, I guess my track is, like, an alternate reality version of this track, I should say, because it came before (laughs) mine. This really makes me want to play Hunt Showdown. You should get onto Daniel and get some DLC content for Hunt Showdown. (laughs) (laughs) That would be cool. And the yeah, the mashup has done so well mm. because there actually is a fair amount of frequency content and like stuff going on in my track and I think probably in this track too, and uh, to get the tempo synced up like that and and get everything working coherently, um, it's kind of like people don't really see it when they do your mashups. I think people think that it's just like a drag and drop process, but this is really well done. And I like the little. Uh, background like since stuff okay i'll finish it later <laughs> no, no worries i don't mean to rush you we can finish it if you no want. no no that's fine uh, this is super good kex terminator also a great name <laughs> kex terminator 78 i am extremely excited for the next one but show you because it's not every day that you get someone obviously doing a cover of your song or an interpretation but someone actually making their own score based off a soundtrack you've made and the person I reached out to to ask if we could use this audio was very much, yes, I would be honored if you would look at it. So <laughs> there's no expectation here, but I think this person loves you, Jonah. So it's... Oh, great. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I uh, have I have sometimes my my only true feeling of celebrity is when people email me, not maybe not my only, but yeah, when people email me, I feel very cool because I when I was in high school, I sent like spam email to a bunch of game composers all the time being like, what, what can I, how do I get in the game industry? I love your soundtracks and stuff like, like constantly emailing indie game composers and it's come full circle, which feels very cool. I think the, I think just some context is, I think, I believe yes. that the afterwards when they, because they've done two songs based off your score and I picked one of them. Um, and the second one is kind of, they've actually done a very similar world approach to you as well, where they've tried to switch up the tone of their second song altogether. Um, so I believe when they were kind of talking about in the comments, they kind of liked this one that I'm showing here, Old Tales, is kind of an ending piece for the game. So that's about okay, the best cool. context I have at the moment. So Okay, I like the, I like the little kind of waves uh, sweep on the noise. That's nice. 
Oh, this is cool. Uh, there's like this sort of ticking clock sound thing that's really nice, like holding the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I, re I really love the use of the, the whatever patches or synth or real intro. I, I'm, maybe they're samples, mm. um, and that ambiguity is really cool because those lower sounds almost sound um, like a chime or a gong or something being played. And I, yeah, whenever I can't tell what's being used, like, is it just a synth or something else? That's always a good sign. <laughs> Okay, a little subtle delay coming in. This is really nice. This is also this is reminding me of my my style when I was younger as well. Um, in terms of these sort of uh, they're uh, the, the very fancy and annoying word for it, I guess, is an ostinato. I'm trying to think of what it, just like repeating patterns mm -hmm. um, and and the, this focus on melody and stuff with some other elements. Okay, now we've got another synth in. Oh, great. Yeah, this really reminds me of like how I, I wrote music um, for a really long time, and, and that's good. Like, I always uh, I feel like I have different eras and stuff, and this reminds me of, of an earlier era mm -hmm. and that kind of glitchy lead that's like sort of high fidelity and sort of low fidelity, and the emphasis on melody. A oh, very interesting melody too. The, it's in kind of a ambiguous scale where there's some mm -hmm. like, um, it's called modal scale. So like there's some notes in there that wouldn't normally be in there. Oh, in the slide. Oh, this is great. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, I'm at 254. That also that modal stuff is so good, mm -hmm. and that's that melody changing over time too. I'm sorry, I'm talking over, but I'm also trying to listen now. Is uh, <laughs> that, That's so great. Like having a melody like that, that really travels and changes over time and is unexpected in those pleasant ways with the, those like weird modal notes is awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. <clears throat> okay, Techno Alchemist, yeah, awesome. Feel free to shoot me an email, any one of any of these, uh, even just to say hello. I love, you know, saying hi to people or getting their uh, I feedback or getting their thoughts on stuff. It's always fun. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, for the Pony Island, when I, I, uh, when the vinyl came out, I, I put together an impromptu mailing list and sent all the people that I could find that did covers vinyls. Um, maybe <laughs> wink maybe i'll be able to do that again eventually uh who's to say um but yeah thank you so much this is a call to arms uh, everyone to do their those. inscription scores so you have to buy a million <laughs> vinyls to send to legally people. <laughs> i mean you legally make a one second thing and it's this could be <laughs> um but yeah can you I, you should link me also the other one maybe i'll i'll poke at it yeah, right yeah. Now. I, but and I, I also want to just to listen to for later Perfect. Yeah, I'll send it off to you. I think it's on their channel there. Let me see. The low one. Here it is. Oh, maybe I can. If it's just right on their fan channel. It's the it. Alone One an Inscription Fan Song. Oh, cool. Which I believe is a, 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 a very different tone. So Totally different. Oh, what a lush synth. This chord progression is so awesome. Okay, I have to. I'm gonna keep listening to this for a second. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, those, that that first four chords are so amazing. Mm -hmm. Such a different vibe too. 
Mm. Lots of range. Okay, I'm going to pause this because or else I'm just going to sit through the entire thing <laughs> kind of staring because it's so like dreamy and yeah. uh, really like the harmony on those chords. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And also the kind of minimal thing. I could just automatically picture that being in some game or, mm -hmm. or in a movie or something. That's super nice. So amazing job, Techno Alchemist. And, and thanks, everyone. Like I said, I, I really do mean it in terms of covers are like... Um, <clears throat> like nothing else you know it's it's that feeling of someone supporting you basically uh with their time and with their art and um just that feeling that maybe you've kind of influenced some part of somebody's uh musical journey because i think all composers have felt the other end of that which is which is uh mm -hmm. learning other composers music and and looking up to other composers so then when it comes to sort of full circle it's just like what me my thing <laughs> okay cool i get like like what <laughs> it's really cool well high praise anyways for all those people who've made amazing uh, covers and mashups and everything else